I believe that that's cyclical, that we will be in that phase for a while. And then once we understand what are the good choices for given problems that we're facing right now, then we will go into another round of explosion of ideas, right? Kind of, okay, now that that's settled, done, poof. Again, you did not know that you need this type of projects. Well, this is DevOps Paradox, episode number 237, KubeCon North America 2023 Review. Welcome to DevOps Paradox. This is a podcast about random stuff in which we, Darren and Victor, pretend we know what we're talking about. Most of the time, we mask our ignorance by putting the word DevOps everywhere we can and mix it with random buzzwords like Kubernetes, serverless, CICD, team productivity, islands of happiness, and other fancy expressions that make us sound like we know what we're doing. Occasionally, we invite guests who do know something, but we do not do that often since they might make us look incompetent. The truth is out there, and there is no way we are going to find it. P.S. It's Darren reading this text and feeling embarrassed that Victor made me do it. You're your host, Darren Pope and Victor Farson. Victor, you are still at KubeCon at the time that we're recording this. So this is our typical right after KubeCon review. And this is for US 2023. This is being recorded at a time when all the vendors are packing their stuff and leaving the mess over there while probably the keynote is going on at the same time or something like that. You're skipping the keynote is what I hear. Yes. Hey, I attended more keynotes this KubeCon than any other KubeCon. Were there any worth going to? Yeah, I, I feel that actually the community part and projects part in the keynotes was more prominent than before. Yeah. And uh, I, w I, w I was not so, I was, I was not disappointed this time. There were a lot more panel discussions as part of day one keynotes at least, which I think was maybe more interesting. And then the sponsored keynotes had a lot more like dynamic speakers, like more talented yeah. speakers than before. And shorter. Maybe so. Where is it? Or the illusion of being shorter because it wasn't painful to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you do not recognize that voice, we have Whitney Lee on with us. She's hanging out with Victor and joining us on this 2023 U.S. review. Whitney, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It just wouldn't be the same without you. I'm just I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking because somebody had to keep Victor straight. Now, before we get into <laughs> before we get into any of the real big items of what happened there, the most important question is based on what we've done on the live stream is, did you get your beef sandwiches, Victor? I got my beef sandwich, I got my pastrami sandwich, and I got my deep dish pizza. And only one of those three ended up with me vomiting <laughs> in the night. <laughs> so, and, and I'm not alone, I, we were a group of people, and the, the others had a similar experience from one of them. We all went to s all same three dishes, three different <laughs> restaurants. Only one produced the, the, the strange outcomes. So it was consistent, though. So as long as it's consistent, it's fine, right? Exactly. No, I can say it's not me. It's them. Because I have proof of, of another person or two next to me. Uh, okay. All right. So let's, let's get back to uh, non-projectile type scenarios here and talk about what you've already talked about. It seemed shorter. It seemed more enjoyable. Is it just because that you weren't in Detroit and you were in Chicago instead? I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that CNCF does listen to feedback for altruistic or selfish reasons. doesn't matter, but uh, I have a feeling that actually quite a few things were improved compared to Detroit. To be clear, we're talking about this in the scope of just the keynotes now. Or are we talking about all of KubeCon? I was now referring to all the KubeCon, okay. but the trick was down to keynotes as well. I, I actually, actually generally stayed, I was interested in, in the keynotes. That's amazing. Uh, they, they were good. Yeah. What made them good? Priyanka well, did a live demo. Yeah, yeah. And it, it failed. 
But it was, and that was even compelling because she always presents herself as being so perfect, like her makeup so perfect, and she like <laughs> smiles and everything. I didn't uh, expect her to make herself vulnerable enough to put herself in a position when she can fail. Yeah, yeah. So they did have to like, play. The, they did have to play the video at the end, but uh, I, I think Wi-Fi is to blame. Yes, yes. Also, the stream didn't happen. I understand. Wi-Fi is always to blame. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the stream didn't happen either. I don't know. I think it kicked on at some point, but I had friends who tried to watch the live stream and it didn't go live when it was supposed to. And I believe it was also Wi-Fi issues. Look, Wi-Fi is the bane of my existence. That's why <laughs> I never use it. <laughs> I'm looking at you and your wired speaker, like your wired earbuds right now. <laughs> I'm wired every which way. <laughs> but I know at some point something goes into the air. It's just not while I'm connected to it. <laughs> so the keynote was interesting. Big fail, played the video, all good. Uh huh. That seems and, and, uh, okay, and right? Last KubeCon, she, she appeared on a keynote. This KubeCon, I appeared on a keynote. Oh, you really? Were in a keynote? No, I was in a keynote. Oh, I missed, I didn't know you're that. All in my shed oh. across the uh, oh, a photo 500 of you because meters. you're a new CNCF ambassador. No, no, not that, but oh. when Crossplane was uh, among other projects. Oh. And I recorded it in a way that only my head is in a shot. <laughs> so you cannot picture that by listening to the podcast, but imagine only head <laughs> on a massively Victor's big screen. One, one and a half stories tall. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. I, I, Maybe that's why I threw up happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably kind of like, he might be behind the door. Let's not go out. Kind of like, let's, let's stick with the key. <laughs> Now, did you just leak something that Victor was now a CNCF ambassador? What What am I yeah. missing? Yeah, yeah, Victor's a CNCF ambassador. Since a week ago. So, yeah, he went to. He was at the ambassador breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I can, first of all, the surprise is not that I'm CNCF ambassador. So the surprise is that I came to breakfast. <laughs> That's the it, real it surprise. It was at like 7:30 a.m. <laughs> breakfast, and Victor was there. <laughs> oh, it was before noon and he showed up. That's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> That's big. The time difference, I think, has, is in his favor, though. Yes, it is. Yeah. Actually. Mm -hmm. So, keynotes were good. What about just general sessions? I mean, Victor, I know you were probably spending, spending most of your time in the hallway track, but Whitney, I imagine you were in a handful of sessions. Yeah. I mean, I can discuss later kind of the feeling of the truck, but this goes to Whitney you now. Uh, I, I was in my own session and I made a schedule of all the sessions to go to, but then I didn't go to any of them. I'm sorry. You have been <laughs> hanging out with Victor for too long. <laughs> no, it's, a, well, it's, a, it's, it's like a virus. It, it just spreads itself. Well, and the sessions are recorded and it's time you get to spend in real life with humans. You can't replace that. It's and different. Yeah, I have a feeling, and also this compared to Detroit, this KubeCon was much busier. Yeah, kind of at least in Detroit, at least in the Expo area, I had a feeling that during sessions there was almost nobody there. Uh huh. And this time it, people yep. were buzzing more, or I'm or I'm forgetful and forgot how <laughs> Detroit was. Here. It did. It was. It felt really busy, and I felt like I couldn't walk from one place to another place without. I had to leave an extra 15 minutes to get anywhere just because I was going to see people and want to talk along the way. But, yeah, I can talk a little more about some stuff I found interesting during the keynotes. They have put together an end-user advisory board, and that was what one of the panel, one of the panel discussions was about an end-user advisory board. So now instead of just having, like, the technical oversight committee and what other ones do they have? Basically, they have end users now having some input and some say and, and some weight in how projects move forward. And I think that's pretty cool. How dare they? Don't they how know that they? the tech is just for us? It's not for the end users? <laughs> Gee. No, that is interesting. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I'm glad that it, I think it took a little too long for that to happen. But yeah, that's yeah, what it is. Now that it's happened, it's like, oh, yeah, that wasn't there already. Uh -huh. What else did you catch out of the keynote that sort of made you go, hmm? Anything? One thing I thought was cool, um, they're trying to do more formalization around uh, educating people, especially to get started in things. So I guess from one program they launched was called Zero to Merge. So it's like, if you know nothing, like I 
connected very recently and you want to be a contributor, you can do this like four week program to learn how to make contributions. And they said on stage, they'd hope to get like a hundred people to sign up and they ended up getting like 600 people signed up. So they, um, they could only do 300 in the first cohort, but it seems to have been a success and they're moving forward with that program. And then like, you know how you can get like a, like a CKA, the certified Kubernetes associate, CKNA, they're starting to do those kind of certifications that are project specific. So you can get like an Istio certification. Or like a silly. Fifteen demo. minutes ago, I just agreed to do the one for crossplane. What do you by do the one for crossplane? Yeah, the kind like, of training and certification. Like you're going to uh, design the training, or you're just you're going to consume the training. I'm going to design it, do oh. it, make it, build it, <laughs> build it, ship it, <laughs> maintain Excellent. it. Huh? Maintain it. Okay, don't go too far, man. <laughs> Come on, don't don't uh, clip my wings. <laughs> no, I did notice that watching from afar that I saw Istio. I think I saw Cilium. Um, uh-huh. I can't Argo. remember the other. I think Argo. Oh. I think maybe there was a Flux one too. I can't remember right now. Falco is also coming you. or uh, done. What do you think about that? Does that make sense? Um. Uh. Well, let's say, like, what is the end game? Like, is it to make you more hireable? Is it something? I I think it does make sense because I often found myself and majority of people I can with that are in a bubble, kind of like we all assume that people know some things and then we can just build on top of that. And uh, there is a massive number of people that are not, proficient with Docker, right? And then even bigger number that they're not proficient with Kubernetes itself and even bigger number because that all builds on top of each other with mm-hmm. what is Istio and stuff like that, right? So I, f- I feel that we somehow always assume that, oh yeah, kind of like, we're not talking about that anymore. Kind of, of course you're using service mesh. Let's talk about whatever fancy new feature we just released. It reminds me of the old Microsoft certifications to where you get an NT certification and then you might get the SMS certification, right? Because it didn't make sense to do it the other direction. Yes. So this is sort of like get Kubernetes first and then start specializing, if you want to call it specializing in the other mm-hmm. tech. Exactly. I think it's cool. I think it makes all of it more accessible. Yeah, that does make it more accessible. Mm-hmm. But that also means there's more, there's going to be more paper CKAs and now CNAs and whatever other acronyms that are going to be coming up. <laughs> yeah. That's that's going to be the problem, I think, because a lot of people can test really well. Uh-huh. I am not one of those. Okay. So that's, I, I'm, I'm concerned now that we're headed back towards the days of the uh-huh. old Novell certifications. To where, okay, I've got all my certifications or the Cisco certifications. I've got all my certifications, but I never, I've never touched a piece of hardware in my life. Yeah. That's, that's my concern with this, but yeah, we'll wait and see, I guess. <coughs> but you know, the, What's, yeah. your C- Cisco certification, right? That you never touched in your life. Uh, at the end of the day, unless you're very young and you're looking for employment, it's more like probably gave you some base that you're not aware of anymore right at the right time in your career which is probably not now but whenever you took it right yeah you never know what's going to come in handy later that's true so new exams new certifications Mm -hmm. what else um gateway api g8 i wasn't sure i'm not sure if that's part of the keynotes but that's something that happened just a few weeks ago yeah and people are talking about one curious thing, uh, this is a feeling, I cannot back it for real, is that I feel that conversations are much more mature now than, let's say, Detroit last year, right? The uh, conversations? Conversations, yes. Between uh, Like, if, if I, I can speak from cross my perspective, because I spent some time in the booth, right? Uh-huh. Before, there were, uh, the questions were usually, what is cross And then I would follow up with, how proficient are you with Kubernetes? And then, uh, uh, and then, I'm uh, sorry, too early, kind of, right? <laughs> yeah. But now it's more like, and, and I know that from other vendors and projects, 
other people also told me the same kind of now we can have a real conversation about what this is with prerequisite you knowing what is the base what we're being mm -hmm. comfortable with kubernetes because many of those projects like octeto would be example right uh doesn't make really sense for people to jump in uh before really running Kubernetes in production for a while, right? And saying, okay, now, now this is, I have the base. I understand what is at the bottom of my stack, right? Uh, let's talk about Octeto. In my case, Crossplane, or uh, Argo CD, and so on and so forth. So it kind of goes in steps, right? You need certain prerequisites to be able to be really interested in whatever comes on top of it and so on and so forth, right? And I have a feeling that this year, the conversations were, in that sense, more mature. More mature in, in terms of, I understand the prerequisites of what's happening here. What else happened on the show floor? Since, obviously, neither of you went to any sessions. <laughs> I went to my own, thank you. Um, okay. uh, AI, 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 AI. Oh, oh AI, yeah, AI, yeah, that. AI, AI. Uh, and the AI. AI. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how much of the AI did you see, did you feel was normal or legit versus hype? I think a significant majority is a hype, right? Yeah. Uh, I feel, and I'm not an expert in AI, which yeah. is not a secret, but I feel that that's not, you know, as a company, I think that that's the right direction. It's probably the right thing to do right now. But then that becomes your focus. I'm very skeptical about that this being one of the other 5,000 side features of what we have, right? So I'm skeptical for AI in that ter those terms, right? Oh, we have, uh, I don't know, we have observability, something, something, and then we are bringing in AI uh, in terms of uh, putting uh, one person over the weekend assigned to it, right? It, AI is, is coming and it's coming big time, but I don't believe it's coming as a side hustle, hustle of companies who just want to put the sticker. Oh. Like, uh, to what goal, with what goal? Would be AI? Yeah, are you trying to be? I mean, theoretically, not theoretically, practice probably not so distant. If I limit myself to Kubernetes right now, right? Mm -hmm. It could do more intelligent scaling of my applications, mm -hmm. right? It could uh, remedy issues when they happen instead of not if of, of instead of me finding out and then waking up in the morning, right? There is a probably uh, at least from Kubernetes perspective, AI is probably going to be the next step in delegation of operational tasks to the so, machine, right? Okay. So there are two, there are two ways to look at it. Like, so everything you're talking about is like, okay, what can AI do for Kubernetes operations? Mm -hmm. And then the other side of the conversation I'm hearing too is like, what can Kubernetes do for AI? Mm. That's different. That's, I think that that's almost boring because <laughs> almost all AI workloads are running in Kubernetes this day. Excluding managed services, because that's something that we don't know what it's running on, right? That's uh, if it's AWS something, something, or Google something, something. That's their proprietary. We don't know what's be below the hood. Uh, but uh, it, that was also in the keynote, I think, that yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they named like four major BI uh, uh, organizations or services and mm -hmm. Kubernetes, 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 Kubernetes. But I think the way they're running those on Kubernetes, I'm not sure. I talked to... Um, Joseph from Adobe later, and he said the way, like that Kubernetes was built to run web applications. Oh yeah, it's and we're not it's, we're yeah. not mature there, right? Yeah. But then, we, AI is not mature, kind of like yeah, everything else is equally mature in a way, right? And so those big, the hugging face, those big things, they're running their AI with Kubernetes, but they're not being transparent about how they're doing that. Like they're not being community open source oh, yeah. the way that uh, the, the way that the community expects. So Joseph, who I talked to earlier, was feeling stress around that, or feeling like where the community is changing and growing. And uh, again, like we take a mature technology like Kubernetes, and now we're trying to do with something with it that it wasn't designed to do. So now it's like, in a way, it's a baby again in this. Oh yeah. And then 
And then the problem of, well, if we optimize Kubernetes now to run AI, is it still going to, are we going to break it for running the stuff it already does run? Like, can you, can you make it do both? I mean, or do you, that, yeah, that I'm what, pretty sure that we're not there yet, but we can. I mean, that's what, Kubernetes was designed to be extended to yeah. infinity and beyond, right? Those are the kinds of conversations that I'm more interested about AI than as opposed to what kind, what it's doing with logs or whatever. Yeah, those little yeah. Those booths but that you know, though, exactly. But when you mentioned <laughs> AI, 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 those are all the booths. That's, <laughs> that's, that's my use talk. case, right? Uh -huh. uh, rather than how do we run it, really? Yeah. How does it run Kubernetes, and then how does Kubernetes run AI? It's two questions. And you'll have the answer for that for me by the time you get home, right? <laughs> so we can edit that we'll in have, here. <laughs> we'll have it figured out for you. <laughs> so with, okay, obviously AI. I had, I had completely forgotten about AI because I'd been sort of living under a rock this week. Was there anything else besides AI that really caught your eyes or ears? I mean, it, it could be just the people I'm hanging out with, but uh, platform engineering is still a conversation. And now hearing from some end users who have done it, like in before, like it's it's more hypothetical and now we're getting some actual like uh, into it. I talked to mm, Hendrik, I can't think of his last name. Yeah. Next time I'll come more prepared with names. But, um, but he runs a, a developer platform at Intuit and it's, he said there, they've increased developer productivity <coughs> ninefold. And at least in my world where I'm, I'm, my social circle is expanding. But when I was talking to people six months ago, I didn't have conversations with people who were like, it's done. We did it. It's good. Yeah. Uh, I think we're far from is done kind of. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certain cilium, or like networking. To me, that's a story that is done. It's cilium. Mm -hmm. Get over it, right? <laughs> kind of like, let's talk about something else. Yeah. This is far from being uh, finished. I feel that platform engineering is something or another is just starting, right? Yes. I didn't mean to imply all of platform engineering is done, but just the fact that there Into are it. solutions. Into it is done. <laughs> <laughs> there are companies who have implemented it successfully that uh, is oh, yeah. pretty encouraging to me. I think that's cool. I enjoyed hearing a lot about it. How did he justify his 9x improvement? Did he give you any bullets off of that? Look, let, let's face it, nobody is increasing productivity nine times because that means <laughs> nobody is doing is nine measured? times more yeah. work, right? But it's, they're more productive. I'll put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Because you can, you can easily fire two thirds of a company if you're nine times more productive. You're still three times more productive if you fire two thirds. <laughs> it's basic math. That's all we have to remember. It's just basic math. And and that's funny you mentioned Cilium because that's another stat I heard a lot this time around that I wasn't aware of. And I, and I think as a newbie, I don't quite understand what it means. But I hear people saying like Cilium's now comes pre-installed in like 90% yes. of Kubernetes yeah. clusters. That's what I meant by done. That is, so I, I have that theory that open source is winner takes all sooner or later we get to the winner. And winner, uh -huh. not necessarily 100%, but kind of this is a clear one. Uh -huh. And that's case of Cilium, networking, CNI. It's Cilium, that's it. Now now we can talk about what's uh, the layer on top of Cilium that will do whatever networking magic uh, will. We, we can move conversations to a different, different place, right? And I feel that Cilium with networking and open telemetry are two very clear ones that, okay, it. get That's some it. crowns made for them yeah what does it mean for the consumers of kubernetes clusters that they they now have access to like Cilium as the networking it just works and you have i mean mo it's mostly about that networking just works and uh that you have policies which you can implement on top of that which again is a standard right not necessarily Cilium specific those are all standard interfaces, but you as a, it, it's more like, it's more important for that one person and only one person in a company, right? When uh -huh. something goes terribly wrong with networking, we all know what is driving that, right? Yeah. 
it's not anymore, oh, is it calico, is it this, or is it that, right? No, it's silly. You know what it is. And there is Joe. Joe, the one sitting in a basement. Nobody <laughs> ever saw him. The one that is called only once a year when everything stops working. And whenever everything stops working, you know it's not working. I can't remember when or how I heard this, but I heard people saying, like, <laughs> operators of Kubernetes clusters are going to know less about Kubernetes than they ever have before. They, they need, like, even the, at the operator level, stuff is getting abstracted away for you. I thought that was interesting. That sounds like somebody was trying to sell you something. <laughs> no, it's part of a, a, an analyst get-together I was a part of. Where they were saying operators. The next generation of operators are less likely to deeply understand Kubernetes. Yeah, I, I think that, that more, I'm, I'm guessing that that more refers to that Operators will get, or tooling for operators will get to the level and interfaces that you don't really need to deal at a very low level as the one yeah. authoring new operator. That makes it honest. Uh, it just will still have to speak with Kubernetes API and do something, whatever you wanted to do, right? But a uh, significant number of people that were creating operators so far, it was, hey, okay, write Go code from scratch. There are two libraries that might help you a bit over there and go. So we've talked AI, we've talked sandwiches. <laughs> was, pastrami what, and beef. Pastrami and beef, we won't go any further. The, what was the most, again, I've already asked this question, but I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. What was the most interesting project that you saw that you had not heard of? I'll go first. None. None. No, I have a feeling, and this, I mean, of course, there is always something interesting and things like that. But that I have a feeling that we are entering into the consolidation phase. All right. We had for years, it was more about innovation in terms, hey, we're coming with completely new, crazy ideas. And some of them stick, some of them don't. And, you know, every, every year you come to KubeCon, you will see something that you haven't thought of even, mm -hmm. right? You were not even looking for it, right? You did not even know that you need it. Mm -hmm. But you do. And I have a feeling that we're now more in consolidation. Of course, new projects are coming along and things like that. But it's more like, okay, let's figure out what are those winners, right, mm -hmm. uh, of different categories. Doesn't matter whether we're talking yeah. about security, networking, storage, this or that. And I believe that that's cyclical, that we will be in that phase for a while. And then once we understand what are the good choices for given problems that we're facing right now, then we will go into another round of explosion of ideas, right? Kind of, okay, now that that's settled, done, poof. <laughs> Again, you did not know that you need this type of uh, projects. Well, don't you think that different innovations make like little poofs? Like, okay, we have eBPF, so now we have a bunch of things pop up around eBPF. We have Wasm, so a bunch of things pop up yes, around Wasm. So Wasm and eBPF, do not fall into the bucket I was explaining now, right? That's, okay. that, that, that's new things opening new doors, and we are very often not even aware of, we don't even know what, which doors will be open with those. They, they, they're the exception from um, my general feeling about consolidation, right? Okay. So basically, if it's written in Go, it's consolidation. If it's not written in Go, it's special. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Precisely. <laughs> Whitney, did you see anything that you had not seen before or not, had not heard of that you went, oh, that's actually pretty cool? The Project Pavilion area was really nice this year. Like it was bigger, like I, a bigger in terms of it had more projects and bigger in terms of there's more space between projects so that you could actually get find room to go people talk to the people at the different booths. I very briefly heard about one I didn't know. But I just got the elevator pitch, so I don't know it very deeply. But one called it Inspector Gadget. Have you heard of it? Do you know it, Victor? Oh, yeah. You love it? Is that what you said? No, I said, oh, yeah. I did not, um, <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, for now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, for now. Um, do you know about it, Darren? I have heard of it, yes. Okay. So my understanding is it's a it's an EVPPF-based one. <laughs> but then all what you can do with Inspector Gadget is very composable. It's modular. And so there are different ways you can add observability or add different features to your Linux kernel, but you can mix and match the different features for your exact use. 
I seem to be more most about observability, best I could tell. I trust the eBPF stuff, but I don't trust the eBPF stuff. I don't like anything <laughs> being hooked into my kernel that deeply. Right. Like eBPF can be a tool for good or it could be a tool for evil, right? That's why I feel that eBPF is going to be for untrusted companies. And when I say untrusted, I mean, you know, not big names that have established uh, relationships are going to be hard sell precisely because of that, right? Okay, this is awesome. This does something really good, but do I trust you to yeah. inject potentially whatever you want into my kernel? Security is going to probably be freaking out <laughs> on, uh, when those, those projects come as an offer. Okay, so everybody's wrapping up. The boxes are being packed. Everything's being taken down out of the ceiling. What is there left to do? Fly back home? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be the, the, uh, the community that we hang out with will, will be a dinner tonight that I imagine will be very quiet. <laughs> we'll just eat our, eat our food quietly and just look at each other with empty eyes. <laughs> because you're exhausted, correct? Because we're exhausted, yes. How would you have paced yourself better for this? I don't think there's any other way. There is no other way. You just have to accept that this is what this is how things are. Grind. Grind. I have a game. Can we play a game? Yes, we can play uh, a game. Okay. I, I heard some stats, and I thought it'd be fun to have you guess. So I, I heard the top five projects that end users contribute to. Do you want to guess at what the top five projects that end users contribute to are? CNCF projects, I presume. CNCF projects, yes. The first one must be Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We'll say on top of Kubernetes. Oh, not including Kubernetes. Not included. Hmm. I need to pull up okay. my... Actually, uh, including Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of them, sorry. My bad. Kubernetes, but yes. It's no, but no, it's no, number look, one? Don't pull up anything. No, it's number four. Okay, no, what I'm pulling up is I can't remember the landscape. So you got to at least oh, okay. give me the landscape because this okay. I don't live in this every single day. Okay. So I'm just looking at, oh my goodness, it's gotten worse. Um, <laughs> Am I involved in the game? I, I don't know. There's a the huge, yeah, yeah, you're involved. Okay. There's a huge backlog too of, of, uh, of projects trying to get in. That's a problem the TOC is trying to solve. In fact, I heard they had a meeting and they made it a little easier to get in. Yeah, because we don't, we don't have enough projects in CNC. Yeah. I know. Okay, I, I have a guess because I, okay. I am looking. I'm looking at the landscape just to remember names because there's so okay. many. Oh yeah. Backstage. Sure. Yes, that's number one. That was my. Good that job. was number one. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like a uh, Family Feud. This is. <laughs> okay. He, Victor doesn't know what Family Feud is, so that's. <laughs> I can guess train him at some TV series that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> probably. Okay. Okay, so we have we have backstage Kubernetes. and we have Kubernetes. Yep. Uh huh. Backstage is one. Kubernetes is four. How about Cilium? No. 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 Okay. I, I, it must be more some something is, more user facing. End users contribute to exactly. Oh, so end users. More vi something more mm -hmm. visible, I'm guessing. Argo. Right? Argo? Yes. Yes. That's must be three. Argo. Now, which Argo? You said it was number three, I, but which specifically? Which Argo? The whole Argo I, family. The, the whole thing. Um, the, Argo CD Argo. is always okay, the, the top dog there. Yeah. Um, is, is Flux there as well? No. Hmm. Poor them. So we have two more left. Two more. One of them I wouldn't have gotten. One of them is a shock, a surprise to me. Maybe you, you all will feel differently. Read the projects, starting. <laughs> Do we have so, another hour and a half? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Should I just say it? Is it time? No, give, give us another minute. Let's see. What could we pick? Okay. Um, I'm sort of looking around. I was around. about to say Grafana, but that's not CNCF. No. How about Nats? No. 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 That's too low. Okay, go ahead, Whitney. Give us the last uh, two. Grafana was close. It's uh, Prometheus is number two after backstage. Okay. And then number five, the one I never would have guessed in a million years, is Telepresence. That would never what? be my guess. Yeah, you're the, yeah, never in a million years. There is some dark that. magic, da some <laughs> some witchcraft involved in that uh, statistic. I mean, kudos to them, kudos to them. So, I got that from one of Taylor Dolezal's 
presentations. And then um, if you want to play again, I have another five, the but, top five end user companies that do that contribute to open source. When you think about it, it actually does make sense because... Yeah? Oh, I want to hear. Uh, so I, I did kind of guess that it's more something, more you, more front facing, right? Uh-huh. And telepresence like tools are very important for companies, right? It mm -hmm. enables, because systems are complex. Yep. You cannot run on your laptop. You need to somehow connect things between development environments and other environment. And then I was surprised telepresence. But then when I think about it, telepresence is probably the only project of that kind in CNCF. Yeah. So it, it does make sense. Yeah. It does. Okay, let's play the other top five. Okay, this top five is... Um, what are the top five companies that contribute to CNCF open source? Software companies or end user? End user companies. Like banks and things like that, yes. right? Okay. I would have to say Intuit is one, one of them. Intuit. Intuit is correct. That's number four. Oh, number it's number four. four? Yeah. I thought it would be one or two. <sighs> uh, the, the bank, the bank in US, the... the, 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 the Capital the, One? Uh, Capital One? Nope. Ah. There's not like, a bank on the list. Give us the industry. Uh, two are media related, I guess. Media related? Like, yeah. Uh, like Spotify? Uh, yes. Spotify, Spotify must be. Spotify. Yes, I mean, backstage, come on. Oh. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. Spotify. Uh huh. I think they got some award for being like top. Yeah. Okay. And two media, you said. Yeah. Is Netflix one of them? No, but I would have no. guessed Netflix too. And again, well, they were never really CNCF. No. There, uh, yeah. Again, there's one on here that I never would have guessed. How about Disney? No. Ooh, no. How about Thomson Reuters? Mm -mm, no. no. But that's okay. That's I give up on a media company. This is the media. Uh, you want to know the media one? Yeah. Bloomberg. Yeah. Huh? Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Okay. Yeah. I heard about Bloomberg involvement. Uh, now that yeah yeah yeah. So Spotify's number one, Bloomberg's number two, number three is Reddit. Okay. Number four is Intuit. And number five that I never would have guessed again is Workday. Which one? Workday. Workday. I, I never even heard about them. Uh, so. That's like software, like HR kind of software you can use to like okay. at a big company look at your pay stub and personal information and I don't know. Your... I would have never guessed that. No, I would have never guessed what they did. Yeah, that wow. was fun. I do you like the game. I liked it too. That was good. <laughs> okay, so y'all are getting ready to pack up, head to the airport-ish tomorrow, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. We're recording mm -hmm. this on Thursday. You're listening to this on Wednesday. So what do you do next? What What is your takeaway from the U.S.? Because y'all were in China. We didn't do anything about China. What do you take away from this U.S. one to get you ready to head towards the EU one in 2024? It's going to be more expensive. It's Paris, and it's be, be just be, just before Olympics. <laughs> uh, for me, for me, like in in my personal world, the we're doing you choose chapter three in January, which is all the security. So I've been paying more attention to security stuff this time around. And I'll be doing my, I'll be scheduling my own enlightening episodes around security projects and, and studying that for a while to get up to speed for future. So that's what I, I guess what my takeaway is or, or what I was paying attention to, especially this time. So you have actual homework and Victor's just worry about spending money. Yeah. So yeah. good. All right. We're, we're on the same page. That's good. It's on brand. That's uh -huh. good. All right, y'all, we'll have a safe trip going home. And uh, for all of our listeners that made it through this one, thanks for listening to another review of KubeCon. And this time it was US 2023. We hope this episode was helpful to you. If you want to discuss it or ask a question, please reach out to us. Our contact information and a link to the Slack workspace are at devopsparadox.com slash contact. If you subscribe through Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a review there. That helps other people discover this podcast. Go sign up right now at devopsparadox.com to receive an email whenever we drop the latest episode. Thank you for listening to DevOps Paradox. <laughs>